Michael used to call my house every single Saturday and talk to me on the phone. My mom wondered, said, you know, I wonder why he doesn't have many friends his own age, you know. In 1976, there were two Michael Jacksons, the seasoned performer and the awkward 18-year-old. Uninterested in women, intrigued by little boys, and in constant fear of offending God. Michael was a prisoner of his own psyche. The only place he felt free was on stage. Do you remember any time in your whole life when you weren't performing? Well, not really. No. We've From always performed, yeah. And he once said to me, he says, you don't understand. I was a star at six, and I do not feel alive unless I'm performing or I'm making a record. There is nothing else. I love performing, but that's not... I can sleep on sleep. But that's not Michael Jackson, the person. After a decade of being jealously guarded by his father and educated by tutors, Michael was a boy in a bubble. At an age when most young men were thinking of college, he had the mindset of a child. We didn't know who was president of the United States, didn't know anything about, you know, the government or how the country was run. I remember him telling me, listen, I've been all around the world, but as a child, I, I never saw any of these places. Chicago looked the same as Dallas to me. In my life, I really had one vacation, and that was last Christmas. Outside of that, let me think what I did. I just stayed home. I watched television. I read a lot. I think the effect of being on the road that way uh, created a very lonely person. When Michael turned 19, fate struck in the form of Diana Ross. Once Mike's Motown mentor, Diana was now in New York, starring in a film called The Wiz, and she wanted her protege to join the cast. The first time Michael really had a chance to stretch out and be on his own was when he went to New York to do The Wiz. Michael had never before been away from his family, but in 1977 he tore himself from their grip. Joe reluctantly let him go, but on one condition. Of course, you know, they sent Latoya with him, but at least they let him go. In New York, Michael was finally free from his abusive father and suffocating brothers. It was also the first time he'd been away from his beloved mother and the all-seeing eyes of the Jehovah's Witnesses. When you have that strict environment, it creates a group of kids that lead what Jehovah's Witnesses call double lives. The Jehovah's Witness life and then the other life when they get away from those within the church. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know? And when you've been completely repressed, if you've never had a date, till you're 18, it's hard to resist. <laughs> the first test of Michael's faith took place at New York's version of Sodom and Gomorrah, Studio 54. He felt at home among the disco's star-studded clientele and was fascinated by its vices. People doing lots of drugs. I mean, lots of drugs. And upstairs was unprotected, promiscuous sex. Celebrity photographer Vinny Zafante shadowed Michael during his New York days, but at Studio 54, Vinny never saw Michael partake in the partying. Instead, he liked to watch and gossip with a posse of disco queens. Yeah, then you were home one side, lies on the other, Liz Taylor on one side, Betty Ford on the other. But I never saw him upstairs or downstairs. I never saw him with a drink. And everybody has a thing. Everybody's got one. It wasn't his thing. Another temptation Michael encountered in Manhattan was his old friend Teresa Gonsalves, once his shy pen pal. But by 1977, she had come of age. Forget about the 16-year-old in Vegas. He's a young man. I'm a young woman. I'm no longer the virgin he knew. Teresa came to visit Michael in New York, but unlike their arranged date in Las Vegas four years earlier, this time 20-year-old Teresa took control. We were just in the room alone, and we were just close enough at that point to kiss, just about to kiss, and LaToya came in the room. When LaToya interrupted Teresa's pass, Michael seemed relieved. The reason gave Teresa an unexpected glimpse into Michael's tortured soul. Michael told Teresa a secret, that a trauma in his past prevented him from sharing himself romantically with anyone. It was no names, 
It was just not a good time in his life. He wasn't interested in anyone, you know, not anyone. He was just in his own little world. Though Teresa suspected Mike had more to admit, she would never learn the details of his despair. In New York, Michael had a chance to become a different man, but instead of seeking help, his abused inner child seemed to go deeper underground, determined not to let his pain stand in the way of the 20-year-old pop star's success. It was a choice that would haunt Michael's adulthood. A lot of times when children are abused, they separate themselves, they dissociate themselves from themselves.